From the Patriot to the Maison de la Littérature, a brief history of the Institut Canadien de Québec. Have you ever wondered why the words Institut Canadien are inscribed above the door to the Maison de la Littérature? Or why the Maison de la Littérature set up home in what used to be a church? For the answers, we have to travel back to 1848. That was the year of the building's construction, and it also happens to be the year the Institut Canadien de Québec was founded. Truth be told, we need to travel back further still. In 1840, the Union Act brought together Upper and Lower Canada to form United Canada. The Patriot Rebellions of 1837 and 1838, along with the Durham Report, which called for the assimilation of French Canadians, had a profound impact and led to the blossoming of French Canadian literature as authors, publishers, printers and journalists sprang to the defense of their language and culture. In 1847, in the wake of this wave of self-affirmation, a handful of Quebec City residents decided to form a society of mutual instruction. Two similar associations had been founded earlier, but their activities were interrupted by the fires of 1845, which destroyed much of the Saint-Roch and Saint-Jean-Baptiste neighborhoods. There were other associations that contributed to intellectual life in Quebec City at that time, but they were bilingual or anglophone, just like 40% of the city's population. And so a new organization was formed. It would be devoted to literature and the sciences and intended for French Canadians, for young French Canadians. It was named the Institut Canadien de Québec. The word institut or institute referred to a group of scholars, artists or writers, while the word Canadien meant Canadians of French origin. It was likely the lawyer and journalist Marc Aurel Plamondon who, under the alias Silvio, published a letter inviting the young Canadians of Quebec City to come together to form an association as others had in Montreal. The Institut Canadien de Montréal, founded in 1844, was of a liberal persuasion, as was Marc Aurel Plamondon, advocating for freedom of thought and speech, as well as the separation of church and state. Plamondon's letter appeared in Le Canadien newspaper, which was run by Napoléon Aubin, another liberal thinker. The first General Assembly of the Institut Canadien de Québec was held on the 17th of January, 1848. Marc Aurel Plamondon, then only 25 years old, was elected president. Napoléon Aubin, aged 36, became vice president. The Institut Canadien de Québec took up residence in the Parliament buildings. A sign of the times, only men were allowed to join. They alone had access to a reading room, library and weekly discussions. But the Institut also held a series of public lectures which women were permitted to attend. The poet Octave Crémazie became its first librarian. In 1848, the city's Methodist community built the Wesley Church on Rue Saint-Stanislas. Later, when the Methodists of Wesley Church began worshipping alongside the Presbyterians at the Chalmers Church just steps away on Rue Saint-Ursule, the Wesley Church was deconsecrated and fell into disrepair. In 1941, the estate of Senator Lorne Campbell Webster bequitted $25,000 to the city in order to purchase the building. The city acquired it the following year and restored it to accommodate the Institut Canadien, much to everyone's relief. Since its founding, the Institut had had to move five times. It had left the Parliament buildings in 1850 to settle in new premises on Rue Buade. It left those rather cramped quarters behind in 1863, relocating to the Caisse d'Economie building on Rue Saint-Jean. Some 20 years later, it bought the Maison Bilodeau building on Côte de la Fabrique, then moved into the new city hall in 1898. Once again outgrowing its premises, the Institut moved in 1932 to the Palais Montcalm, which belonged to the city. In 1944, the Institut at last found a suitable home when the city rented out the former Wesley Church for a period of 99 years at a cost of one dollar per year. The building was completely transformed by architect Silvio Brassard. The nave became the Salle de l'Institut, a venue that hosted performances and artists from near and far for more than 50 years. The ground floor was turned into a library. 
1983, the Institute's headquarters moved to the city's central library, now known as the Gabriel Roy Library, while the Wesley Church became the library for Old Quebec. In 1999, the Institute was forced to close its performance hall on safety grounds. The project for a new Maison de la Littérature was announced. The Maison de la Littérature, designed by Chevalier Morales Architects, officially opened in October 2015. Since then, it has organized a slew of literary activities, developing shows, exhibitions and residency programs with partners throughout the province and around the world. It is now a proud ambassador for Quebec City, a UNESCO city of literature. The Maison de la Littérature is one of 26 libraries belonging to the Bibliothèque de Québec Network, which has been managed by the Institut Canadien at the city's behest since 1897. The Institute continues to fulfill its mission to this day, providing access to knowledge and culture through libraries, literature and literacy. And so the words Institut Canadien remain inscribed above the door to the Maison de la Littérature today. Marc-Aurel Plamondon and Napoléon Aubin would doubtless be proud.